it is easier to resist at the beginning than at the end. I believe man will fly and I'd base this assumption on the fact that God has blessed us with minds that are capable of imagining it. Anything that can be dreamt of will eventually be built. Anyone who says otherwise is a fool. Why does the eye see more clearly when asleep than the imagination when awake? In Michelangelo was realized the grandeur of Italy struggling vainly against crushing oppression. He expressed that which was highest in it, reflecting the loftiest side of its idealism mingled with deep pessimism in his survey over life, for, wrapped in austerity, he saw mankind in heroic terms of sadness. The search for truth and the desire for beauty were the twin ideals he strove to attain. The keenness of this pursuit saved him from the blemish of egoism which aloofness from his surroundings would otherwise have forced upon him. A painter should begin every canvas with a wash of black, because all things in nature are dark except where exposed by the light. I have from an early age abjured the use of meat, and the time will come when men such as I will look upon the murder of animals as they now look upon the murder of men. It is an acknowledged fact that we perceive errors in the work of others more readily than in our own. Art is never finished, only abandoned. A poet knows he has achieved perfection not when there is nothing left to add, but when there is nothing left to take away. You can have no dominion greater or less than that over yourself. You can have no dominion greater or less than that over yourself. Leonardo da Vinci, the men of experiment, are like the ant, they only collect and use. But the bee gathers its materials from the flowers of the garden and of the field, but transforms and digests it by a power of its own. Titian, who painted the living man of action, the man of parts, susceptible alike to the appreciation of ideal beauty and heroic impulse, but guided withal by expediency, reflected this more practical aspect of life. In his portraiture he expressed the statecraft for which Italians found opportunity beyond the Alps, since in Italy it was denied them, and Titian found even Venice too narrow for the scope of his art. Avoid the precepts of those thinkers whose reasoning is not confirmed by experience. The draperies that clove figures must show that they are inhabited by these figures, enveloping them neatly to show the posture and motion of such figures, and avoiding the confusion of many folds, especially over the prominent parts, so that these may be evident when once you have tasted flight, you will forever walk the earth with your eyes turned skyward, for there you have been, and there you will always long to return. Art is the queen of all sciences communicating knowledge to all the generations of the world. Once you have tasted flight, you will forever walk the earth with your eyes turned skyward, for there you have been, and there you will always long to return. So vile a thing is a lie that even if it spoke fairly of God it would take away somewhat from his divinity. And so excellent a thing is truth that if it praises the humblest things they are exalted. Practice must always be founded on sound theory. He recorded these thoughts at the instant of their birth, for a constant habit of observation and analysis had early developed with him into a second nature. His ideas were penned in the same fragmentary way as they presented themselves to his mind, perhaps with no intention of publishing them to the world. But his ideal of art depended intimately, nonetheless, on the system he had thrown out seemingly in so haphazard a manner. His method gives to his writings their only unity. It was more than a method, it was a permanent expression of his own life, which aided him to construct a philosophy of beauty characteristic of the new age. Man has much power of discourse which for the most part is vain and false, animals have but little, but it is useful and true, and a small truth is better than a great lie. Reprove your friend in secret and praise him in public. I am fully conscious that, not being a literary man, certain presumptuous persons will think that they may reasonably blame me, alleging that I am not a man of letters. Foolish folks! Do they not know that I might retort as Marius did to the Roman patricians by saying, that they, who deck themselves out in the labors of others, will not allow me my own? They will say that I, having no literary skill, cannot properly express that which I desire to treat of, but they do not know that my subjects are to be dealt with by experience rather than by words, and experience has been the mistress of those who wrote well. And so, as mistress, I will cite her in all cases. To such an extent does nature delight and abound in variety that among her trees there is not one plant to be found which is exactly like another, and not only among the plants, but among the boughs, the leaves, and the fruits, you will not find one which is exactly similar to another. 
Intellectual passion drives out sensuality. The painter has the universe in his mind and hands. Man discurseth greatly, and his discourse is for the greater part empty and false. The discourse of animals is small, but useful and true. Slender certainty is better than portentous falsehood. Every now and then go away, have a little relaxation, for when you come back to your work your judgment will be surer. Go some distance away because then the work appears smaller and more of it can be taken in at a glance and a lack of harmony and proportion is more readily seen. The knowledge of all things is possible for I know that there are numberless people who, in order to gratify one of their appetites, would destroy God and the whole of the universe. If this art has never remained among men, although so necessary to them, it never existed and never will exist. The organ of perception acts more readily than judgment. Just as iron which is not used grows rusty, and water putrefies and freezes in the cold, so the mind of which no use is made is spoiled. Principles for the development of a complete mind, study the science of art. Study the art of science. Develop your senses especially learn how to see. Realize that everything connects to everything else. Though I may not, like them, be able to quote other authors, I shall rely on that which is much greater and more worthy than experience, the mistress of their masters most people, if you give them a book, they sniff around on it a while, then try to eat it. Details make perfection, and perfection is not a detail. Tell me if anything was ever done. Tell me. Tell me. While I thought that I was learning how to live, I have been learning how to die. The abbreviators of works do injury to knowledge and to love. Of what value is he who, in order to abbreviate the parts of those things of which he professes to give complete knowledge, leaves out the greater part of the things of which the whole is composed? Oh human stupidity! You don't see that you are falling into the same error as one who strips a tree of its adornment of branches full of leaves, intermingled with fragrant flowers or fruit in order to demonstrate that the tree is good for making Planck's truth at last cannot be hidden. Dissimulation is of no avail. Dissimulation is to no purpose before so great a judge. A mask. Nothing is hidden under the sun. There are four powers, memory and intellect, desire and covetousness. The two first are mental and the other sensual. The three senses sight, hearing, and smell cannot well be prevented, touch and taste not at all. People of accomplishment rarely sat back and let things happen to them. They went out and made things happen. That which can be lost cannot be deemed riches. Virtue is our true wealth and the true reward of its possessor. It cannot be lost. It never deserts us until life leaves us. Hold property and external riches with fear. They often leave their possessor scorned and mocked it for having lost them. How may paintings have preserved the image of a divine beauty which in its natural manifestation has been rapidly overtaken by time or death? Thus, the work of the painter is nobler than that of nature, its mistress. What is fair in men? passes away, but not so in art what is fair in men, passes away, but not so in art Leonardo da Vinci make your work to be in keeping with your purpose to become an artist you have to be curious. When the fig tree stood without fruit no one looked at it. Wishing by producing this fruit be praised by men, it was bent and broken by them. The act of procreation and anything that has any relation to it is so disgusting that human beings would soon die out if there were no pretty faces and sensuous dispositions. Those who accomplish don't sit around, hoping things will happen the painter will produce pictures of little merit if he takes the works of others as his standard. If the painter has clumsy hands, he will be apt to introduce them into his works, and so of any other part of his person, which may not happen to be so beautiful as it ought to be. He must, therefore, guard particularly against that self-love or too good opinion of his own person, and study by every means to acquire the knowledge of what is most beautiful, and of his own defects, that he may adopt the one and avoid the other. Time stays long enough for anyone who will use it. Time stays long enough for anyone who will use it. Leonardo da Vinci love is something so ugly that the human race would die out if lovers could see what they were doing he had searched to find a scientific basis for art and discovered it in the imitation of nature based on rational experience. 
We do not lack devices for measuring these miserable days of ours, in which it should be our pleasure that they be not frittered away without leaving behind any memory of ourselves in the mind of men. We must doubt the certainty of everything which passes through the senses, but how much more ought we to doubt things contrary to the senses, such as the existence of God and the soul? Having wandered some distance among gloomy rocks, I came to the entrance of a great cavern. Two contrary emotions arose in me, fear and desire, fear of the threatening dark cavern, desire to see whether there were any marvelous things in it. The eye which turns from a white object in the light of the sun and goes into a less fully lighted place will see everything as dark. He who wishes to be rich within a day will be hanged within a year. Light is the chaser away of darkness. Shade is the obstruction of light knowing is not enough, we must apply. Being willing is not enough, we must do. Learn how to see. Realize that everything connects to everything else. In time and with water, everything changes marriage is like putting your hand into a bag of snakes in the hope of pulling out an eel. Creatures shall be seen on the earth who will always be fighting one another, with the greatest losses and frequent deaths on either side. There will be no bounds to their malice, by their strong limbs the vast forests of the world shall be laid low, and when they are filled with food, they shall gratify their desires by dealing out death, affliction, labor, terror, and banishment to every living thing, and then from their boundless pride they will desire to rise towards heaven, but the excessive weight of their limbs will hold them down. Nothing shall remain on the earth or under the earth or in the waters that shall not be pursued, disturbed, or spoiled, and that which is in one country removed into another. And their bodies shall be made the tomb and the means of transit of all the living bodies they have slain. There is nothing in all nature without its reason, he wrote. If you know the reason, you do not need the experience. Nothing can be loved or hated unless it is first understood. Nothing can be loved or hated unless it is first understood. Leonardo da Vinci, if there is no love, what then? It is better to imitate ancient than modern work. There are three classes of people, those who see. Those who see when they are shown those who do not see everything in some way connects to everything else sooner will there exist a body without a shadow than virtue unaccompanied by envy the painter will produce pictures of little merit if he takes the works of others as his standard but if he will apply himself to learn from the objects of nature he will produce good results this we see was the case with the painters who came after the time of the Romans for they continually imitated each other and from age to age their art steadily declined the supreme misfortune is when theory outstrips performance where the spirit does not work with the hand, there is no art. Nature is the source of all true knowledge. She has her own logic, her own laws, she has no effect without cause nor invention without necessity. Nature is full of infinite reasons which have not yet passed into experience. He conceived it to be the painter's duty not only to comment on natural phenomena as restrained by law, but to merge his very mind into that of nature by interpreting its relation with art. Tears come from the heart and not from the brain. Tears come from the heart and not from the brain. Leonardo da Vinci God sells us all things at the price of labor. Experience never errs. It is only your judgments that err by promising themselves effects such as are not caused by your experiments. Many have made a trade of delusions and false miracles, deceiving the stupid multitudes. All knowledge which ends in words will die as quickly as it came to life, with the exception of the written word, which is its mechanical part. He who thinks little errs much. Those who, in debate, appeal to their qualifications, argue from memory, not from understanding. Anyone who in discussion quotes authority uses his memory rather than his intellect. Those who fall in love with practice without science are like a sailor who enters a ship without a helm or a compass, and who never can be certain whither he is going. Although attempting to bridge the gulf which separated the real from the unreal, he refused to treat the latter supernaturally. That mystery which lesser minds found in the occult, he saw in nature all about him. He denied the existence of spirits, just as he urged the foolishness of the willow, the wisps of former ages, alchemy, and the black art. I have offended God and mankind because my work didn't reach the quality it should have. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. 
Leonardo da Vinci, I thought I was learning to live, I was only learning to die. Where the spirit does not work with the hand, there is no art. The time will come when men such as I will look upon the murder of animals as they now look on the murder of men. He who can copy can do. It is as great an error to speak well of a worthless man as to speak ill of a good man. My body will not be a tomb for other creatures. Nothing strengthens authority so much as silence. Nothing strengthens authority so much as silence. Leonardo da Vinci a well-spent day brings happy sleep the reader, at one look over this page, immediately perceives it full of different characters, but he cannot at the same moment distinguish each letter, much less can he comprehend their meaning. He must consider it word by word, and line by line, if he be desirous of forming a just notion of these characters. In like manner, if we wish to ascend to the top of an edifice, we must be content to advance step by step, otherwise we shall never be able to attain it. For once you have tasted flight you will walk the earth with your eyes turned skywards, for there you have been and there you will long to return. A beautiful body perishes, but a work of art dies not. A beautiful body perishes, but a work of art dies not. Leonardo da Vinci, it's not enough that you believe what you see. You must also understand what you see. He who possesses most must be most afraid of loss. Just as food eaten without appetite is a tedious nourishment, so does study without zeal damage the memory by not assimilating what it absorbs. The air moves like a river and carries the clouds with it, just as running water carries all the things that float upon it. Not to punish evil is equivalent to authorizing it. While human ingenuity may devise various inventions to the same ends, it will never devise anything more beautiful, nor more simple, nor more to the purpose than nature does, because in her inventions nothing is lacking and nothing is superfluous. They will say that I, having no literary skill, cannot properly express that which I desire to treat of, but they do not know that my subjects are to be dealt with by experience rather than by words, and has been the mistress of those who wrote well. And so, as mistress, I will cite her in all cases. Though I may not, like them, be able to quote other authors, I shall rely on that which is much greater and more worthy, on experience, the mistress of their masters. One has no right to love or hate anything if one has not acquired a thorough knowledge of its nature. Great love springs from great knowledge of the beloved object, and if you know it but little you will be able to love it only a little or not at all. Form and position, distance and propinquity, motion and rest. The smallest feline is a masterpiece. Art lives from constraints and dies from freedom. Experience does not err, only your judgments err by expecting from her what is not in her power. Further than this, influenced by platonic thought, Leonardo's conception of painting was, as an intellectual state or condition, outwardly projected. The painter who practiced his art without reasoning of its nature was like a mirror unconsciously reflecting what was before it. Although without a manual act painting could not be realized, its true problems, problems of light, of color, pose and composition, of primitive and derivative shadow, had all to be grasped by the mind without bodily labor. Beyond this, the scientific foundation in art came through making it rest upon an accurate knowledge of nature. Even experience was only a step towards attaining this. Iron rusts from disuse, stagnant water loses its purity and in cold weather becomes frozen, even so does an action sap the vigor of the mind. So we must stretch ourselves to the very limits of human possibility. Anything less is a sin against both God and man. The function of muscle is to pull and not to push, except in the case of the genitals and the tongue. Just as a well-filled day brings blessed sleep, so a well-employed life brings a blessed death if you find from your own experience that something is a fact and it contradicts what some authority has written down, then you must abandon the authority and base your reasoning on your own findings. When you put your hand in a flowing stream, you touch the last that has gone before and the first of what is still to come the Italian Renaissance was reflected in him as rarely a period has been expressed in the life work of a single man. He represented its union of practice and theory, of thought placed in the service of action. He summed up its different aspects in his own individuality. Intellectually, he represented its many-sidedness attained through penetration of thought and a keenness of observation, profiting from experience, extended into every sphere. 
As an artist, he possessed a vigor of imagination from which sprang his power of creating beauty. But, in spite of his practical nature, he remained a dreamer in an age which had in it more of stern reality than of golden dreams. His very limitations, his excess of individualism, his want of long-continued concentration, his lack of patriotism, his feeling of the superiority of art to nationality, are all characteristic of Renaissance Italy. Animals will be seen on the earth who will always be fighting against each other with the greatest loss and frequent deaths on each side. And there will be no end to their malignity. By their strong limbs we shall see a great portion of the trees of the vast forests laid low throughout the universe, and, when they are filled with food the satisfaction of their desires will be to deal death and grief and labor and wars and fury to every living thing, and from their immoderate pride they will desire to rise towards heaven, but the too great weight of their limbs will keep them down. Nothing will remain on earth, or under the earth, or in the waters which will not be persecuted, disturbed, and spoiled, and those of one country removed into another. And their bodies will become the sepulture and means of transit of all they have killed. Human subtlety will never devise an invention more beautiful, more simple, or more direct than does nature, because in her inventions nothing is lacking, and nothing is superfluous. Instrumental or mechanical science is the noblest and, above all others, the most useful. An average human looks without seeing, listens without hearing, touches without feeling, eats without tasting, moves without physical awareness, inhales without awareness of odor or fragrance, and talks without thinking. A wave is never found alone, but is mingled with the other waves. Raphael, on the other hand, found only beautiful sweetness everywhere. The tragedies of life failed to touch the young painter, who blotted from view all struggle and sorrow, and, in spite of the misery which had befallen his nation, could still rejoice in the sensuous beauty of the world. There was another side to the Renaissance, dependent neither on beauty nor heroic grandeur, yet sharing in both through qualities of its own. In the days of thy youth seek to obtain that which shall compensate the losses of thy old age. And if thou understand that old age is fed with wisdom, so conduct thyself in the days of thy youth that sustenance may not be lacking to thy old age. Learning is the only thing the mind never exhausts, never fears, and never regrets. The deeper the feeling, the greater the pain, the deeper the feeling, the greater the pains Leonardo da Vinci I expose to men the origin of their first, and perhaps second, reason for existing study without desire spoils the memory, and it retains nothing that it takes in. Men of lofty genius when they are doing the least work are most active. Who sows virtue reaps honor. Who sows virtue reaps honor. I know that there are numberless people who would, to satisfy a whim, destroy God and all the universe. To me it seems that those sciences are vain and full of error which are not born of experience, mother of all certainty, first-hand experience which in its origins, or means, or end has passed through one of the five senses. And if we doubt the certainty of everything which passes through the senses, how much more ought we to doubt things contrary to these senses such as the existence of God or of the soul or similar things over which there is always dispute and contention? 